Just checking. You hear me all right? Because the this is take number four. We know this now, don't we, Tom? Yeah. Is it five? Because you know I'm like Ron Burgundy, yeah? You just have to stick a mic on me and tell me a script and I will say it. You didn't stick a mic on me. So we've done so much and it hasn't been recorded. I'm not angry, Chris. I'm just a little bit disappointed, all right? Anyway, welcome to this week's Urban Uncut, everyone. First time I didn't say the right thing, according to Tom. Second time, Steve the Geezer um, interrupted because he's come to fit a, a ghost to mobilise to one of our customers' cars. I had a phone call from James the Wizard over at Old Stratford, so that interrupted things. Um, and the fourth time, we suddenly realised that after doing all of this, that I wasn't mic'd up. <laughs> anyway, we've got some pretty cool stuff this week. Bless you. We have got Staff Cars. This is possibly one of my most favorites. It's taken the crown of little Charlie and his Lupo, so that is very good. Stay tuned for that. And also Platinum Waves campers. We've got three very, very cool looking campers, but we're starting off with this very, 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 you've been tangoed, very cool Defender. shouldn't I? Here he is. All right, boss. No, I'm drained to f Oh. Oh, are we filming? Yes. You can edit that bit, right, <laughs> can't you? <laughs> this is the power of editing, Chris. I'm, I'm, it's, you've got a Monday. Usually Chris is really, really positive, full of energy, like energetic, nice vibes. Usually if I, you know, if I want to be put in a bad mood, I'll speak to Simon. Right? <laughs> if, <I'm, laughs> if I want to, get some positive vibes and some productive ideas, I'll speak to MD number two, Chris. But you're not feeling it today, no? No. But do, you to, do you want to talk about it? Or? No, no, it's fine. Let's talk about R&D, which you don't normally like to talk about. But I can talk about it. Are you our R&D ambassador? Yes, absolutely. Now I am. I mean, the whole carbon splitter section where I've got 20 out of 20, I mean, I'm literally That keeps going genius. up every time we talk about it. It's 15. And I think if you count the questions, I think there's only 13. Which actually, if you run it down, it's nearer 10 than 20. Basically, it was 100%. That's probably best. <laughs> yeah, yeah okay. so 100%. Should we, so we just go and have a walk around and see what's happening? Because obviously Simon yeah. isn't here. Yeah. So let's go and do Hence that. Hence my stress levels. Come on then. And yes, I've got shorts on. It's still summer. Literally, everyone else is like hooded up. Like, I've got my winter wheels on now. I've got my winter wheels on my car. And I've got my winter wheel trainers on. So it's like black wheels, black trainers. That's what we do. September to March, black trainers, because it's raining outside. You get white Summer trainers. trainers, white. There you go. <laughs> oh, it's all loud. Ooh, that's pretty. It's all loud. RS4 coming for a full conversion? Yeah. Get on that, Chris. It's very aggressive, that front splitter, isn't it? But I think the RS4 needs that. Yeah. So, customers bought this in to have the full conversion. So front splitter, side skirts, rear spoilers, yep. and then rear little... Yeah, yeah, the low little, seal follows all the way around yeah. to the back. So we didn't change the diffuser on these. And HF5s to finish it off. Which you can't go wrong with. How good does that look? Exceptionally good. 
Really, really good. Yeah. It's an interesting car, the RS4 as well, because it um, sit, obviously sits right in between the RS3 and the RS6. But it's, um, for me, have you driven one of these? In there, but then I've reversed it back in So it. not actually on the no, road? No, no. There's such a sweet point that it's slightly bigger than an RS3, but slightly smaller. It feels a little bit more dynamic than the RS6. The RS6 does feel like quite a big, heavy car. I know, it's when we went out. It's quite boaty. Yeah, this is a brilliant, brilliant car. Yeah. I'd have one of these if I didn't have to consider Miles per gallon. Fuel and all that. I like business. that. Talking of R&D, you said, you said RS3. RS3. That's also on the radar, isn't it? Yes. We're just at the point of signing off the designs. Hatchback and saloon. Yeah. Great yeah. car. A lot of noise going on, a lot of work's going on. It's not really, it's a bit quiet now. Um, EQ, EQC. Yeah, it's in for a uh, wrap. Yeah, so a um, customer of mine wanted a Magno, uh, I think it's like a Magno Grey, Telus, Telus yeah. Knight or Telen, Telenite or something Stagger like that. Knight. Yeah, so we've got a, a very, very dark grey EQC, I can't remember the official colour. Sorry, my product knowledge isn't up to scratch there. However, we're going matte metallic charcoal. And I said to the customer, look, there's no point in doing the shuts and returns because getting in and out of the car, you could scuff the vinyl. Yeah. But the colour match is so close anyway. Yeah, it works, doesn't it? Yeah, it's fine just having just it Just like the, the satin outside. black on a, on a gloss black car. Exactly, yeah. Yeah, so all the, uh, the side steps have gone up to be de-chromed. I think we're going to wrap the windows. We're going to de-chrome the windows with black. Oh, we've decided satin or gloss black on this. Oh, I mean, I hate it when it's gloss black because it doesn't look as good as satin black. I know what you mean, but there are gloss black accents on the car. So I kind of think that it yeah, should. No, yeah. and I'll I think just stand here and look and at it. You know, you've got the piano black here. So if this is all gloss black, I think if you were to have satin black here and then gloss here, it might look a little bit odd. So I think the windows have to be gloss. So that's how we're going to do that then? Yes, please. Uh, yeah, we're powder coating the side step. We've yeah. got, um, actually on this vehicle, we're not color coding, are we? Because it's got the gray plastics, we're no. leaving it as is. And I think, I think this customer will come back for the kit as well. Yeah. Yeah, we've put him off because we're not quite ready. We're not quite ready with it yet, but no, I'm looking forward to seeing how this. And obviously this they're not the wheels that it's going to be on. No. We know that that doesn't suit the car. I don't um, think they do, do they? No. They're a bit too sporty. We've also got a D-chrome on the front, don't forget. I mean, this is the thing with Mercedes, isn't it? They always are still quite very chromey, chromey. Like, like Bentley. Even, even my car, which had the, the night package, which is D-chrome everything, still had yeah. chrome on the door handles. They still like chucking it in, yeah. in little places. So yeah, so that's going through. And I saw next door in the detailing bay, my customer's sat in black G63. I mean, you know what you're getting with a satin black G63. This is like fish and chips, isn't it? It's, yeah. ju it's just, it just works so well. It just looks good. It just looks mean. So this was an obsidian black um, G63. Customers bought it to us. Oh, um, it's got the soft kit already. It's <laughs> a little bit colder in your legs. It's not, see, you've got to start, it's going to be jeans soon, isn't it? Um, yeah, so satin black looks absolutely fantastic. I think it really suits the G63 because it's so angular, isn't it? It's so crisp. It works on the Defenders as well, doesn't it? It does, yeah. Especially with the, all, all the gloss black arches and, you know, and it just runs straight through yeah. the middle, doesn't it? But, yeah. Yeah, it just looks looks mean. So that's uh, that's going out tomorrow. Is going it? out tomorrow. The boys are prepping yeah. that. Happy yeah. days. Anything else to report? Um, looking a little bit. Is your mood better after spending like five minutes with me? Have I radiated good energy? That's only because you've got a new pair of trainers that you're so positive. Yeah, but I, I, I'll be honest. I'm breaking them in a little bit. They're a little bit. Now a little bit stiff. I do like them. Yeah, no, I like I'm them as well. Great. Off camera, we've got them in sale. <laughs>
Yeah, Big Trouble in Little China. Yeah, yes, there we go. Bosh. One of my favourites. <laughs> yeah, let's check this out. <laughs> <laughs> Neil Young, my dad loves Neil Young. Yeah, so do He's I. been to see him a couple of times. Yeah. Flight in the Navigator. Yeah. Oh, this is fantastic. It's like a little museum. Yeah. Um, well, it's a 70s van, so I thought I'd stick some 70s band posters up. Yeah. I, I like my old music and stuff. Um, but I was never there in the 70s, you see, so I just started sticking other things up. Like. Just a 70s soul, mate. That's yeah. what you are. Yeah. And my dad took a look and he said, yeah, that's well 70s. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and he was there, so it's got a seal of approval. Are the speakers wired in? Yeah. It looks like we've got full surround sound. Almost. They're, they're seatbelts. <laughs> <laughs> I, I was looking at them thinking they were a lot of speakers as well. Yeah. And no, we've got two up here and then some in the doors up front. Are we just starting this in here, Chris? Shall we just start this in here? So, hi everyone, welcome to this week's Staff Cars. I'm with I'm with Morgan, um, one of our designers here at Urban Automotive, and we're in his 1977 Dodge B200 Tradesman. Yeah. Nice. Um, it's by far one of the coolest things I've ever been in, by far. There's a very 70s, disco ball, hot rod style vibe going on and Morgan is by far not by far our coolest member of staff but also one of the coolest people I know um, and I think the van reflects that so uh, talk to me a little bit about it mate. V8? Yeah it's, it's all about the engine really it's a 360 uh, Dodge LA motor and uh, that's 5.9 litres, I think, in English money. Right. Um, so what, under 10 miles to the gallon? Yeah, I think from the factory it was like 13. So <laughs> um, I, I did some maths <laughs> once upon a time. Yeah, I mean, that's, <laughs> and it's worse than that now. Yeah, um, yeah. yeah. Uh, this van could, I mean, not just with you, but this van in 45 years has seen some <laughs> in it. Mm. And it has got some stories. Yeah, it's a California van actually. Is it so really? I'm the first UK uh, custodian of it, um, and yeah, it's uh, solid underneath really. But well, that's uh, the thing because they don't salt the roads, do yeah, they? So yeah, it's dry. Really solid. I even found it on uh, Google Street View where it was parked up. No way. Yeah, outside an old lady's apartment, and it just had stuff thrown in it. It was As like a used for storage. Well, it was like a shed really. It just <laughs> kept some furniture in it, I think. So have you had to do a lot of work to it? Yeah, it failed smog in California. <laughs> And they just <laughs> couldn't, you know, they got to do a smog test, don't yeah, they? Yeah. And I mean, it would fail smog now, still. Um, but I've got it running. So, so this, a is a, standard, this isn't yeah. one for the, the tree huggers, this car, is it? It's not. But then, you know, but then you're not producing a new car, you're driving an old exactly. car and keeping it on the road. It is. It's, you know, like Teslas, you know, the, the, the stuff that they have to dig yep. up to make the batteries yep. and stuff like that. Yep. So this is. Um, to keep an old car running and alive is eco. That's yep. upcycling, that's recycling. This is greener than buying a new car. You've basically yeah, saved a family it. of dolphins, Absolutely. as far as I'm concerned. They, yeah. sh they should name a, a coral reef after you. <laughs> <laughs> That's what, as far yeah, as I'm concerned. Yeah. Anyway, um, so modifications, it's fairly stock. Um, yeah, engine-wise, that's all stock. It's got a two-barrel carburetor on it, which is a little bit pokey, but I'm worried about sticking a four-barrel on it because right. it's just going to be juicier, <laughs> isn't it? Juicier. But I, it does need hot rod in it. It ought to be hot rodded um, with a intake manifold, right. uh, car, four barrel carburetor, set of headers and I think that would do it. But it does nicely, sit yeah. quite cool, it's obviously yeah. you've, you've done something to the, the yeah. front or the rear or the wheels. Something's it, happened to something these fr <laughs> front, front <laughs> suspension and it gives it a cool start, it nose down, right. it's got a rake and yeah it just looks nuts. Awesome. Right, should we take it for a little drive? Oh, the keys are in the, keys right. are in the hole. Let's, let's go for it.
we're in here. We'll You'll go, feel it clunk when right, it goes okay, in. Right, fine. Yeah. Now, obviously, left hand drive. Yes. We're very wide, so I need to consider that. Now, being a, a, a bit of a poser like I am, um, or being into more sort of German cars, I did try and um, compare this this morning to a G Wagon 4x4 squared. Because <laughs> <laughs> I said that was the last left hand drive thing that was massive yeah. that I've, I've driven, but this is You're very, over the line this already. Is, this is very different. I'm not, I am. Oh no. So I forget you have to stick to this. Uh, yeah, I'll let you know if you're about to uh, clock in. So what in so one on here is that? Well, do I need to? Is that just? Do I need no, to change? If you, do I need if to do you leave it in drive, it will auto shift for you. Right. Um, so can I shift that into drive now? Yeah. Yeah. One's good for creeping around, and then stick it in D. Oh. Stick it in D. There we go. We're in D. Uh, yeah. And it's funny you should say creeping around because. Um, <laughs> There's a, there's a Ted Bundy feel about this, this van. That's what my dad calls it, the Bundy <laughs> wagon. <laughs> <laughs> it's, you know, a panel van, and there's plenty of jokes about that. I mean, you, you, know, watch, old... you watch any kind of um, documentary about serial killers, or, yeah. you know, there, there's usually a van like this involved, isn't there? Yeah. Not that I'm, you know, sort of saying anything about you, because you're a lovely, lovely chap. Yeah. But, um, yeah, this, there, is, there, yeah. there is something very... In, Scary and intimidating yeah. looking about yeah, this. Yeah, I think that's part of the, you know, the allure really that it's kind of mysterious, a bit hard looking, <laughs> and no windows, you know, panel van. But it it's must get some looks. Honest. It must oh, yeah. get some serious oh. looks. Yeah, it's like being a local celebrity driving yeah, this thing around, you know. I bet. Yeah. 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 We're not going to get through there. She's moving. Thank you. There we go. Perfect. So, talk to me about your car history then. Um, what was your first car? Something interesting, or you like the rest Mark of us? Mark One Golf. 19, Perfect. Yeah, 1983 Mark One Golf Cabriolet. Amazing. Yeah. That's a and great first car. It was a 1.5 GLS, and I stuck a uh, 1.8 KR engine in it on twin Delorto carburetors. So you you don't do you don't do things by half then. Every car you've had is going to be slightly modified or even fully modified. Yeah, the modified stuff is a pain in the bum in regards to getting parts and working on it. And yeah. Stuff is. I mean, I, that's why I want to kind of keep this stock because. But the thing you is, know what you got. yeah, it's, it's you don't really need to do anything else. This it's got it's got infinite cool factor as far as I'm concerned. Anyway. Um, I just love it. It's really, really, really cool. Just take it down the uh, the bypass for a little, little blast. So there was the Mark One Golf, and then, you know, what was your first American? Well, I've, I've got an English uh, English car with an American engine in it, so Morris Eight okay. Gasser, uh, with a small block Chevy engine in it, and yeah. that was my first Yank motor. And I think that's the best combination because it's a little English car with a big American Silly. motor. Yeah, yeah. yeah. American cars can sometimes look a bit too big on UK streets. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like yeah. a big Bel Air or something yeah, of looks course. a bit silly. Yeah. And um, bikes, you're into your bikes more than anything, aren't you? Yeah, yeah. I've got everything that I've got is old, really. Yeah. I think the newest car I've ever owned is a 2005. The Cube? Yeah. I love that thing as well. And that's got a lot of character. Yeah, it has, yeah. Yeah, everyone loves that. Is that your that's yeah, your okay. car to just sort of nip about in? It's nice and easy, I suppose, is it? Or? It's a sensible car, yeah. yeah. It's, it's the most sensible thing I've ever had, I think. Yeah. <laughs> it's, very, it's, very, it's very... It just puts a smile on your face. It's just cool. Right, so we're trundling along at about... We're doing about 47. Would you go faster than this, or you... 50, 55 is, is good, Okay. Yeah. Uh, I mean, it's starting to whistle already. It does whistle seals. quite a bit. <laughs> and, yeah, it's 60, you know, you'll catch the wind a bit. Yeah. Um, I'm happy. Yeah. I'm, I'm happy. I'm comfortable yeah. at 50. Yeah. And everyone knows as well, you know, the other traffic on the road. Yeah. Big, heavy van, you're cruising slow. Yeah. That's the way to do it.
Hi guys, me again. So here we have three vans with Platinum Wave campers. We've done the full urban conversion with a contrasting gloss black package. They've also got the light bars and all three of them have had wraps as well. We've been following these vans for some time now. If you're of interest, then obviously contact Platinum Wave campers. They're gonna be collected tomorrow. What a great week at Urban Automotive. Check out these camper vans, they're so cool. Coolest on the road. Get in the comments and let us know which color you would have. Make sure you share, like, and subscribe.